Okay, what the fuck is going on here? Jesus Christ. Welcome everybody, my name is John, uh, we are playing X-Plane 11 today, uh, we are going to be flying the uh, King Air C90, we are going from uh, Toronto City Centre to um, it was Montreal, we have our flight plan in here, and we are going to get ready to start up here, so we bring up my uh, checklist. Alright, so we're going to go right ignition to on, uh, right on, stable, and one. We're at 12%. I've never actually done one of these, so I'm just going to kind of breeze through it here briefly and see what's all involved in it. Alright, here. 
the right engine is starting up. How about we added some fuel to the mix? There we go. She's starting up there now. Does this your right condition ever? ITT and N1. Should not go over a thousand degrees. Okay. It just seems all normal there. So let's turn that ignition off, turn on the left one. Okay, it was 900 degrees, still starting up. Oil pressures are looking good. Okay, so we are going today, we are flying out of uh, CYTZ, we're flying to Bomet, to Tigot, Miglow, and then we're going to be landing at um, the Montreal airport. So I'm just going to bring up the information here that I need for radio frequencies. Okay, so let's see here. Um, 118.2 is what we're going to switch to. Now, is the actual one down here? No, it's up here. Okay. Uh, 118.2. Okay, so we got that there. Turn that off. The yoke is doing all the things it's supposed to do. Gear is down. Masters on, avionics are on. Uh, we'll turn on the pedo heat. Turn on the beacon. We'll turn on all of our lights that we need. Let's accidentally turned on the starter. Whoops. Gotta remember how to push back. Um, let me look it up here because I don't remember. Apparently I have to look it up here, so let me see if I can get into the settings. Uh, joystick. We're going to go into the yoke. Uh, button number nine. What's button number three do? Okay, so we can edit this one. Now we're going to search for push. P-U-S-H. Alright, so we're going to do that one. Apply. Done. Sorry, no push cards here at this ramp. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to configure the flight, then we're going to start from the runway. Hopefully the flight plan stays. Uh, customize, and we're going to start from 08. E-firm. Hopefully the flight plan stays. Okay, the aircraft is running still, that's good. Flight plan is still in there. Flight plan is still in there as well. Turn that off. Okay, okay that's good. Okay, I'm just going to set the altimeter. We're going to fly at... Uh, we're going to fly at 21,000 feet today. Actually, yeah, we'll go lower that. We'll go six seventeen. Okay. Oh, my flight stuff's down here. So heading nav. So we should be able to go alt nav, and that should be good. Okay, let's uh, let's take off here. So we're gonna go um, city center traffic. Um, November four three X ray Sierra is departing runway zero eight. 
full power. I don't know what we should rotate on this thing. I didn't ever look that up. So I was playing this earlier. I hit a pack of a, a flock of birds taken off from here. I'm going to say 120 is probably good. Go. Oh, 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 easy there, killer. Gear up. So we're flying to, uh, woo, okay, trim wheel there is going nuts again. Okay, so let's see if I can get the autopilot on. Do that on, we're going to put a altimeter, engage. So let's see if this flies us to, uh, Okay, that's pretty cool. So let's uh, let's fix that. We're gonna go uh, vertical speed. And okay, so I don't know why it's set to that. Okay, so I gotta figure this out now. The trim wheel. I don't know what's wrong with this trim wheel. That is, yeah, the trim wheel's broken. Cool, so we're about to go into a stall and everyone's going to die on board. I thought I had a good idea on how to operate this uh, thing, but I guess not. Hmm. I wonder if it's one of these ones where you pull back and it... Nope, still wants to go nose down. That's pretty cool. See if that wants to work? Nope, we're still nose down. You know, we're just going to end up crashing into the ground because I'm pulling up as hard as I can and it's uh, still not working, so we're doing pretty good here. Set the. Let's set that down to 3500. Hopefully that wants to work. Until we can figure out how to work the vertical speed. Autopilot. Um, make sure we're not in hit point towards the ground yet. No, so we're at a level flight here. How does this work now? If I do this, does it point us up? Or does it turn it off? It doesn't do anything. Hmm. Where is the vertical speed? Alright, so we'll try putting it in nav mode. turning us. Maybe the autopilot is broken. Let's do more of that. Wow, that is weird. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know why none of that wants to work. Because normally they go like vertical speed. There would be an option here to put what you wanted. I clearly don't know how to work it, so that's not helping us out much. Heading. 
turning. Now how do I change that? All these different dials. Great, this is beachy. Let me look it up here. That's what real pilots do, right? Just look it up as they go. Page 43 of the manual. Let's take a look here and see. Autopilot gauge. Okay, I pressed that up. Yaw damper. I got that. Heading mode. Yeah, okay, so you adjust it with that. Okay. Well, what about the aircraft current? I'll see. The autopilot will maintain the current rate of climb or descent. How do you turn on nav mode? That's what I want to know. Cameron's in V-Lock mode. Okay, so I don't know why that, um, in nav, which I already have. Okay, so I think I'm getting it here, I'm getting it here. Move 17. Seventeen five. Oh, so what? Thousand feet a minute. Okay, so we're good. we're getting her figured out. We're getting her figured out. But I don't think the GPS is set to GPS mode. It's not working. Okay, so we're in heading mode. We'll turn off now, though. We'll do this. Okay, that turns the dial. Now, what happens if I just change that? What happens if I hit that half? Nothing. From the flight director. I think that just gives us yeah, information on that display. We pretty much want to be going to pretty much east. Okay, so we're getting okay. We're getting her. Uh, we're getting her lined up here. 
at some altitude. We're going 196 knots, so we're going faster than we would expect it. Okay, so I still have to figure the GPS. That's lighting. No, that's communications. The only thing I can think is that it's in here. Okay, so it's in V-lock mode. How do I change that? Menu button doesn't work. Good. Uh, uh oh, uh oh, I think we figured it out here. Now, if we go nav mode, nothing. But if we turn off heading mode, I feel like we're getting somewhere here. Anyway, it says we're going to be to our first waypoint, so maybe it's it's doing this. So we'll just wait here a minute and see. And see what happens. I don't really know where we are. That looks like it's Lake Scugog. We're still climbing though. We have a ground speed of 193. Keep an eye on this GPS to see if it uh, to see how it works. It's currently GPS mode that will direct the aircraft laterally according to a flight plan. Currently programmed with the GPS. Alright, so I think I figured this out here. It should work my thing is correct here. I've turned them both to GPS, so that's good. I've got the nav button selected. Vertical speed. Maybe this will work. I think we're going to level off at like 10,000 feet. I don't think, because this is saying we're going to be there in 10 minutes. Actually, no, sorry, we're gonna, I'm losing my mind. It's 10 minutes to the, to that waypoint. Are you still good though? Ground speed's 190 knots, air speed's 170. Doing fairly well. It looks like this off here in the distance is Sturgeon Lake. This is Pigeon Lake. We should see, we should be pretty much flying over Rice Lake here in a, in a sec. Bit of a, a bit of a gong show to start, but you know, we're, we're getting there. It says there's still something running and I don't know what it is. That is. I love DC Gen. Yeah, I don't know. But we're gonna take a look here and see here in a minute to see um, if this is autopilot's gonna correct us or not. See why it shouldn't work. We have it in nav mode, and we have both GPS is set to GPS mode. So I guess what I could do to test it is put us full left. Let's do this. See if it brings us back, or it just puts us into level flight. Puts us into level flight, 
Yeah, it puts us into level flight, so it's still not working right. If we click that button, it works. Beautiful. That is just perfect. I like that. Well, if everyone's enjoying the flight, let's rip to our cruising altitude here. We can uh, turn off the seatbelt sign. Just gonna, I don't think the seatbelt sign is there. Our door open. Let's slowly turn our heads behind us here and see if the. Okay, so we do have a couple of uh, we have a couple of private uh, customers today. Grand speed's 184. So we are losing a little bit of a uh, little bit of speed. There's probably a little bit of wind up here. Let's see where we are here. Uh, that is that there is yes, that would be Pigeon and Shamong Lake that we're looking at directly here. We turn our head, we're just about to go over Rice Lake. But we're doing uh, we're doing not too bad. Seven minutes, fifty seconds until we get to our uh, our first waypoint. I've never flown into this airport, I don't think, so it should be uh, should be interesting. We could have do a day flight and see how things go. Now they know how to operate the aircraft. I am trying to figure out still how to. Uh, how to work the, the flight computers in the, the larger aircraft. I think we're going to level off here at 13,000. Whoops, uh oh, what's going to happen here? What if all it's turned off? We're gonna go vertical speed here. Yeah, we'll, you know, we'll just hold our altitude. 12,005, still good. Go alt. And there we go, so we're set. 12,600. Should be starting to pick up some speed here now that we've leveled off. We'll pull back the prop a little bit here. see an increase, I can't remember what it is, it's like an increase in prop RPM. It doesn't look like our props are synced though. So if we turn that on, what happens? How much? Okay, perfect. Glad we turned it on. And we can probably pull back the uh, mixture here a little bit. I'm just trying to see where my fuel flow is. Yeah, we'll pull that back. I don't know. I don't see what the fuel flow is. We don't have much fuel, that's for sure. I didn't. Uh, that's something I didn't check first. Okay, there we are. So that's actually not affected by fuel flow. Isn't affected. So we're going to use approximately 260 pounds in an hour. Yeah, we should have some. Uh, we should have fuel to get there. Okay, so we're four minutes out from Bombit. Current speed is 223 knots. So we're cruising under a pretty good, uh, pretty good speed. Down below us right now is Rice Lake. You can see the Autonomy River there. This airport right here is actually my uh, my airport. I started flying at it. It is um, Charlie Yankee Papa Quebec, uh, the Peterborough Airport. And I've landed there all kinds of times. My other uh, my other series that I'm doing, you know, flying around the world. That's actually where we started from. We're currently in the Bahamas. There, uh, I still have to proceed with that. I haven't done, done any more with it, but things are looking good. We'll switch over to 122.8. I think it is. Twenty-two, 
on ramp traffic. Uh, November 43 X ray Sierra is at 12,500. Heading, uh, we are currently at a heading, we're currently heading 074. Any conflicts? Uh, please inform. I don't have that sim hooked up right now. I probably should hook it back up. I did use it there for a little while. Yes, I do have some wonky things going on with my trim wheel for some reason. I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, I don't know. Whenever I whenever I touch it, it just decides to uh, do its own thing. So it looks like Bombit is just uh, it's just south of Rice Lake. And then Tiget is north of the Trenton Air Base. We got a fairly straightforward flight here. And we're into Miglo. And then direct. So I'm just gonna bring up the airport information here. is open to the public. It doesn't give me pretty much any information on the airport at all. That's pretty cool. So if I had to guess, we are going to fly in today on to... It doesn't even tell me what... Uh, let's just see here. It gives me any other information on the airport. It doesn't give me much. Five seven. So we're currently we're probably gonna be landing five seven. Uh, we got runway six and runway two four right. So we're pretty much flying directly in. So I'm gonna say we're probably gonna be landing on zero six left or right. Let's say zero six right. High intensity approach lights, all that jazz. Departure. Yeah, this sheet doesn't give me. Uh, I'm surprised this website doesn't give me any of the IFR details. That's kind of poopy. But oh well. That's actually 35 seconds. We'll be at Bombit. We'll switch over to our next waypoint. Still can't figure out what that is. Let me switch this above my head. Overhead floodlights, avionics panels, that's all just like lighting and stuff. Uh, looks like the left one is dead, maybe? I don't see anything. Maybe it's a failure? I don't I don't think I've got failures turned on though, so. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So we are, yeah, we're just about to be over, we're just heading just past Bombit, 12, 13 seconds away. And it should switch over to the next thing, or is it gonna give me a hard time? I don't wanna do that, no, go back, go back. Flight plan, go back. Uh oh, I broke it. Breaking it now. Uh, how do I get out of this menu? For those of you that are watching, as you can see, I'm not very familiar with the uh, the Garmin system. Okay, okay, there we go. We're getting, we're getting, okay, we're getting there. Getting there. What happens now if I go back? It's still not flying it. on the flight plan. I'm doing something wrong here. So let's do that. Direct. Enter. Okay, so now we're direct that way. So I, I thought it just did it automatically. I guess not. We're learning so much. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm doing something wrong. Though. I'm almost certain I am.
Why don't you go back to what you were? I want my map back. Okay, there we go. We got the map back. We're in. We're good. Seven minutes out from ticket, ticket, whatever it's called. Let's see what's going on at the window here. So we still are. I don't recognize this. So we must be past the uh, the Quartha Lakes. Instruments are still looking good here. Nothing doesn't look like anything to be concerned about. I don't know how to turn down the ITT. I'm assuming that's the normal where it's sitting. I could be wrong. It looks like we're just about to pass Trenton's coming up here. Trenton will be on our right. Let's check out a couple of different views here. These planes are pretty cool looking planes. Things are looking grand though. You can see Lake Ontario off there to the right. Things are looking good. Staring all right along. Oh, that's kind of weird. Let's see what other views we've got here. Yeah. The run what runway is this? Was this the runway we're supposed to be landing on? That's funny. Let's uh, view... Uh, let's go back to Chase. The King Air is a beautiful piece of machinery. It's looking good there. The scenery, the scenery I'm pretty impressed with in this game. It does look pretty good. So this is the Bay of Quinney here. So Trenton is somewhere down in here somewhere. That looks like it's Trenton right there. So that is uh, Canadian Forces Base Trenton. I believe that's one of the larger Air Force bases in Canada. And yeah, we are uh, passing by it. Well, we are five minutes out from the ticket. And things are still looking good. Welcome to the stream if you just joined. My name is John. Uh, we are flying the Beechcraft C90. We are headed to uh, the Montreal Airport. Currently uh, cruising at 12,500. And um, yeah, we had a, a rough start to our trip. Couldn't figure out how the uh, autopilot worked. So, uh, yeah, we were kind of buzzing along at 3,000 feet in downtown Toronto at, um, yeah, full throttle, so that went good. I'm somewhat getting the hang of the, um, of the autopilot now, but, uh, if any of you guys have any, uh, any tips or anything like that for autopilot, feel free to let me know. I haven't flown much of this aircraft, so there's not much, uh, I'm too familiar with on it, but hey, everything helps. The flight plan today was made by, I used uh, Sky Vector. The only, thing the only thing I'm not a huge fan of is it doesn't uh, it doesn't give you a ton of information on like approaches and stuff like that. Like I was, I was looking at this um, one for Montreal and it doesn't give you, it gives you some information on the airport but not, not a ton. I know a lot of the airports down in the US, like it gives you frequencies for, uh, for approaches and all that. And, Again, I could be using it wrong. It could just be me. Let's take a look here. Everything still seems to be good. We got a ground speed of 226 knots. Um, air speed of uh, looks about 186, 187 in around there. So that's looking good. Weather is currently clear. Things are looking peachy outside, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, this isn't. Uh, I've got a couple of different like, series I'm doing with, uh, with this one here. Uh, right now we're just kind of doing uh, 
I kind of think of it today as just doing like a cross country style uh, journey. So we'll kind of just go across. I'd like to end up in Newfoundland, maybe um, maybe fly over to uh, to England, try and land at Heathrow, get familiar with some of the bigger aircraft, and yeah, do some cruising around. I am a uh, I am a pilot in training on a Cessna 152, 172 is what I'm currently learning on. So we do try to fly those quite often so I can get some practice in. But uh, yeah, hopefully everyone's enjoying and uh, enjoy the view. Look at this beautiful piece of machinery. The uh, So our call sign today is November 43 X-Ray Sierra. Currently flying 12,500, 223 knots. So we're doing not too bad. Let's see what's around us here. We just passed over Trenton, so we're still at the Bay of Quinney here. We should still be able to see Trenton. That is Trenton right there. It's the Bay of Quinney. This comes out. This is all Lake Ontario here. Uh, Lake Ontario runs down, and then you go into the St. Lawrence River, the Thousand Islands area. When we fly over today, we should be kind of intercepting the St. Lawrence when we land in Montreal. Montreal is one of the larger shipping hubs of the uh, the Great Lakes systems. From what I understand of it, it's one of the hubs, so it's the it's the hub where everything coming from the ocean gets there before it moves into the Great Lakes. The uh, yeah, the St. Lawrence River is a very deep uh, river. I've heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true or not, but at one point in World War II, there was actually a U-boat spotted in the St. Lawrence River. That could be total baloney. I don't know. All right, let's see how we're doing here for navigation. We got a minute until uh, to get, then we're going to go to Miglo, and then we're going to go Miglo direct. Things are still looking good. I would have to mess around. I don't know how to do any of the instruments approaches on this. If it, my guess is if I'm somewhat got an idea on it, you would. Put it in here and then switch to approach mode and then it, as soon as it picks it up it would notify me. I'm not entirely sure if that were, how that works. But yeah, things are looking good. But yeah, there is something I'm missing here on the uh, on the autopilot for it not to uh, for it not to work. Maybe it'll work this time. Let's just let's just see. Let's watch it and see. I wonder if this is, this means for me to do it manually now. Let's just see here. Yeah, so I'm gonna go flight plan again. Next one down. Direct enter. So we're going direct. Miglo will be there in 11 minutes. Now I'm gonna go back here to my map. So Miglo is to get, Miglo is here. So I wonder what... So I guess once I'm here, it'll, it'll tell me what I'm do. So if I go 1,000 feet a minute and I'm at 12, I need 12 minutes to descend. I can always decrease the speed if I need to as well. I don't know what that is. I've got the waypoints in the map, but it's giving me like, uh, uh, I guess it's like, I don't know if it's vectors, like a route. I wonder if I try to put that in, what happens? Let's just mess around here and see. So we'll flight plan, we're gonna go down here, clear, enter, and then we're gonna go this way. And it's Habs 4. Let's see if that works. H, A, B, B, S. It doesn't let me put any more in. Hmm. 
So I'm kind of wondering if that's just a waypoint somewhere, because the distance is... Yeah, I don't know. Let me see if it'll, it'll come up, perhaps. Let me get rid of this. So I'm going to get rid of that. Clear. Delete that. Delete that. Close that. I'm going to search for Habs. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Now if I do this, let's just see here, then we're going to go... That says it's only 32, so this is, yeah, that one's definitely something different. So you go up to there, clear, enter, there we go. You know, Miglo to then direct. So we're eight minutes to Miglo, then we'll fly directly to the airport. That'll give me an idea, then I can start my, uh, I can start my descent. What's our speed? So we're 226 knots. Uh, let's check our landing list for take uh for landing approach speed so it's about a hundred hundred and two knots seems to be the the proper speed so about a hundred knots okay it's not too bad we'll make sure we turn off uh yaw damper that stuff. We'll probably do a. Uh, we're only going to do a visual of the uh, the runway because I don't know how to do a, an instruments approach on it. That makes that simple. Well, it doesn't look like there's much else going on out here. And I'm not any. I'm not familiar with any of these lakes here. I'm not from this area, so it's hard to say. But I am from Canada. Let's take a look outside here, and we can see. Let's do uh, Jace. So I've got a mod, or a, 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 what you want to call it? I feel like a visual pack in for the water. Is it because I was flying in the Caribbean and like the, in the Bahamas? I turned the water this color because I thought it would look cooler. I think I'm gonna turn it back because like none of the lakes here are that color. I think I'm gonna turn it back though. It looks like we are getting to the Thousand Islands area here. You can see the St. Lawrence River. I can't see the airport yet. We're, I'm pretty sure we got to somewhat fly over. We'll fly by Ottawa anyways. Let's clear that out. And then we'll make a flight plan. Just from Miglo to Miglo. Yeah, it doesn't let me do that from there. Okay, oh well. We won't worry about it then. So we'll go view. And let's get back into the cockpit here. Five minutes out, roughly six minutes out from Big Low. Then we will go direct to the airport. So you can see there on the GPS, YOW is just off the left here. You can see a plane up there. Like I was saying earlier, I was, uh, when I took off, I was, actually, I was testing this aircraft, sorry. I was testing the aircraft and uh, we were taking off out of uh, uh, the Toronto City Centre there and I was at, uh, I was probably at 1500 feet if that, and yeah, smoked a pack of birds, a uh, flock of birds, that went well. It's down there, is that a runway? Nope, just a road. Yeah, the thing that would be crazy about like flying like this area in, in real life is that a lot of this uh, a lot of this area there is some farmland. It's about like off to your right there would be a lot of farmland, but if you're flying at five thousand feet in a Cessna and uh, you gear anywhere further north here, it's just trees, trees and rocks and hills, and that's it. It's not uh, not a very forgiving uh, terrain if you had to make an emergency landing. But 
all is still looking well. No concerns. Oh, this plane have a magnetic compass. It does. We're still going to figure this out here because it's saying the, the left generator isn't working. Left DC gen. And I don't know. Oh, maybe that's why. That just turned it off. Yep, that just turned it off. And the load's even. Okay, we fixed that problem. Good job, team. Yep, yeah, helps if we turn off the uh, the starter, that's for sure. What a beautiful flight. I haven't flown many instrument approaches. We did... Um, when I was flying into the Bahamas, um, when I can't remember what island it was, uh, there was about a cloud layer about a thousand feet or so, two thousand feet, and yeah, we had to ended up using an instrument approach there, and it was it was hard to do. It's tricky, making make sure because when you're flying instruments, your your gauge is only pretty much. So it does make it uh, it does make it tricky. More speed or less speed? More. So it does drop the prop RPM. It gives us more torque. I guess I'll weave at more speed. How does it affect the fuel flow? Yeah, huge fan of it. Cool. Try to keep it around a thousand, uh, thousand pounds of torque. I don't know. If, I'm assuming that's not over torquing the engine. that noise. Hey, welcome. Thanks for following. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the channel. My name is John and uh, welcome to the King Air C90. We're currently flying from uh, the Toronto City, City Center uh, to the Montreal Airport. And uh, yeah, so far things are going all right. We uh, a bit of a mishap on takeoff. We uh, we almost died. I'm gonna be honest with you. We almost died. We uh, didn't know how to operate. Didn't know how to operate the autopilot. Thought I did. And uh, yeah, that resulted in us cruising at about 3,000 feet wide open you know, uh, over the city of Toronto. I'm sure uh, the innocent bystanders were enjoying the show. But yeah, thanks again for the uh, for the follow. That's awesome. You are actually my very first actual follower. Um, I've got a. It's pretty much a cousin that, uh, that followed me, but that's awesome. Thanks for the follow. All right, so let's see where we're about a minute and 25 seconds out from our uh, from Miglo, and then we'll go direct, and we will go from there. A pretty uneventful flight, except for the start. We almost killed a couple of people. I'm sure I'm probably gonna get uh, get a report on me for uh, when I go to land. But let me bring up the frequency here for uh, for Montreal. We're not using BATSIM, so I don't actually have a tower controller. Which kind of sucks, but... Let's do uh, VFR advisor, 134.15. Let's get that in there. 134. 1.5. Switch over to that. Now, once we're a little bit closer here, we will uh, we'll make our announcements that we're uh, we're coming to land. I think we I think I said we're going to land on runway. Uh, we're going to do six right. All right, so we're ten seconds in, so we're going to go flight plan. I'm pretty sure I'm still doing this wrong, but. Direct, enter. So it's 116 nautical miles to, to that. So we're at 12,000 feet. We can, 24 minutes out, we can start our descent. We'll do 500 feet a minute. But yes. It's been a pretty good flight so far. 
Let me just check my things here. So we got all this on. We do have the torpedo heat on. Um, we haven't gone through any condensation or anything, so I don't think we need to use our de-icing fluid. Uh, so we can probably turn off these lights. We'll keep this, that on, that on, that on. We don't need the panel on. And yeah, let's just bring up our checklist here. Climb, cruise, cruise power is set, we got all that. Descent, um, so our chamber will have to set. So actually, let's see if we can get the ATIS. So let's see what the ATIS frequency is there. Uh, ATIS. Uh, that doesn't tell me, okay. It says 125.6, but I don't think that's it. This is automated. Terminal information serves. Okay, maybe that is in English, so 133.7. So we'll put that in 133.7. I don't think we'll get it yet, though. No, we're not picking it up just yet. Radio is on, right? One thirty-three-seven is ATIS. We'll go back onto our advisory, uh, our VFR advisory frequency. So our descent pressurization, um, windshield anti-ice, we're all good there. Seats and tables have to make sure they're positioned. Uh, our landing speed is a hundred knots. Drop auto feather. We have to engage. Now where is that button before we're? I saw it here. Auto feather. So we'll I guess we're supposed to turn that off for now. Uh, altimeter will be set because we'll have the ATIS. Approach speed will be 100 knots. Landing gear will make sure it's down. Radar. Then we we'll just have to make sure we do all of our autopilot stuff. So again, once we're 24 minutes out, then we will uh, uh, we'll begin our descent. Six minutes out, so yeah, I'm just trying to figure it here. We we'll go 24 minutes. I guess, yeah, we'll try that 500 feet a minute. That might be a lot, but like that might be like too much of a distance, maybe. Well, if we wait till, we wait till 12 minutes out, we do a thousand feet a minute, or two minutes out, and we're 2,000 feet up. Yeah, we'll do like four. We'll be like 20 minutes out and we'll, we'll start descending. We'll just watch our time and we can, uh, we'll just go from there. I 
how much fuel do we have? We have 400 pounds. So if that was my big concern, is that we were, uh, I didn't check our fuel before we left. We're burning about 260 pounds an hour. And we've been in for about an hour. So we should have, if I had to guess, we should have about two or 300 pounds of fuel left. I think we are getting a little bit of a haze of a cloud here. Which is all right. I'm gonna say, yeah, we'll do 20 minutes here. That's that's my final answer. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Hmm. Well, let's get a view here and see if we can see. The, uh, we should be able to pretty much see the Ottawa Airport. Let's see here. Is it ahead of us? Maybe we can't see it yet. My understanding here, show me the map from this angle or not. We should be pretty much flying straight into the sixth right. This, uh, I'm not close enough yet. So we can get rid of that. But yeah, it's looking pretty good out there. You can just barely start to see some of the mountains off in the distance. Lake Ontario is way behind us there now. We've got uh, the St. Lawrence River here that we're following along. I don't see... Just trying to think here of where it would be because that's the Ottawa. It's probably the Ottawa River there, maybe. Maybe not. I could be just listening to bring up the map again. I can see. YOW, so yeah, it's way off to our left. We might not even be able to see it because that's the Ottawa River there, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I can't tell. Let's go back inside here, see how things are going. We're 22 minutes out, 2 minutes and 23 seconds and we'll begin our descent. During our descent we'll probably pick up some, uh, some extra speed, so... Now it's 100 knots landing speed, that's scary because I took off at 120. I guess the, air, the runway at uh, the Toronto Centre is pretty short. What instruments are all looking good? Fuel flow is good. Oil pressure and temperatures are uh, looking good there. Nothing looking like it's a concern. None of uh, this action going on. So you've had like an autopilot failure and everything. Maybe turn on the de-icing. What was I hit that switch? Nothing. Did I turn on that switch? Does the light come on? No. Cool. One minute out. Almost gonna start our descent here. Weather's still looking good. I don't know if I can pick up the ATIS yet or not. Let's switch back over here and see. No, nope, nothing yet. But yeah, if, uh, if I do touch my trim wheel, the aircraft will fall out of the sky. I'm always surprised in how they have the instruments later. Like, they have some instruments here. You'd think they would have, like, your... Like, some of the... Like the extra instruments here so I think if it did have a failure. My opinion, but Alright, so 
so we are about 20 minutes out. So let's happen if we press one here. Nothing, so we have to go to vertical speed. Vertical speed. Nothing's happening yet. Okay, good. Let's go one touch of the button down. Let's see where it brings us. 250 feet a minute, so we'll go one more. Let's see where that brings us to. Leave it at that for now. No, we'll go one more. That's the yeah. That'll go down. That'll bring us to like 500, 600 feet a minute. But we are making our descent. So we're descending about 600 feet a minute. It will level off at about two. What was that noise? Autopilot turn on? The speed's good, no? Yeah, I don't know what the beep was. We're still on track there, yeah. We are going pretty quick now. We're at 240 knots. So once we get a little bit closer, we'll start pulling back some speed. I don't see the runway yet. We're still pretty far out. How far are we out still? We're about 70 miles still, so we've still got a ways to go. And yeah, we're still doing about 600 feet a minute. Not too shabby. Now, if you watched my uh, my previous stream, I streamed it on YouTube. We had uh, ran into a bit of a snag. We uh, where did we take off from? It was uh, Bullhead City, I think it was. We took off in a, uh, in a 172. I think we were in a 172. We uh, flew to the Hoover Dam, so you know an X-plane. The Hoover Dam doesn't exist. I'm guessing there's probably a scenery pack you can get where it does exist. Anyways, flew there. Went to uh, went to go land. Is it just autopilot? Maybe a thousand feet. Went to uh, went to go land at Boulder City. Simple simple airport. Come around. Uh, messing with my trim wheel to try and get the air aircraft to descend correctly. And uh, yeah, I hit the uh, trim wheel was set and went to go missed. Full power, or to go uh, at lots of speed. We had 75 knots. Full flaps, give her full power. Nose doesn't do anything. Aircraft doesn't get any up. So I give her a little bit of a pullback on the stick. No response. Pull her all the way back. I get a little bit of a response, but the trim wheel for some reason was still glitched. I'd have to look back. Maybe I had the autopilot still on. That's another possibility, but I don't think I did. I'm pretty sure I had turned it off. That's just me though. 11,000 feet. It didn't say prop levers. Okay, so prop levers full forward when landing for descent. It doesn't say anything about that. I don't think I've got a seat belt light in this one. Uh, avionics overhead, co pilot. No, I don't have a. Uh, don't have a seat belt light. But we got about 350 pounds of fuel left in each tank. Still got lots. Um, yeah, let's see what else it says here. Call it cabin. Okay, so it doesn't have much else for the descent. Can I set my? I don't think. I don't even know how to work this. Yeah, we'll just leave that where it is. Let's go. I'm just gonna go back down here. My uh, okay, back to our landing settings. Going through 10,000 feet. How far out? We're so we're 14 minutes out. 500 feet a minute. 10,000 feet. We're looking at 20 minutes to get to the ground. So we're still looking good there. How far out are we? 57 miles out. Don't see the airport yet. 
There's a bit of a haze. Let's see if we can pick up the anus yet. Nope, nothing yet. Once we get the anus, we can set our altimeter. I don't even know how to do it. So you do that. Things are still going well. Let's get another outside view here. We can see what's going on in the world. You can see the Appalachian Mountains there. We got the St. Lawrence. I'm going to guess this is probably Cornwall, I would say. Could be wrong. Things are still looking great outside, though. Slowly making our descent. Lots of fields here, so if you did have to make a emergency landing you wouldn't have the fields that you would want here which is good we're at minus four so it's still a little chilly outside but we're still looking good 50 miles in I don't see the airport yet still it might, it might be there just in the haze yet. I don't know exactly where it is on the river. But it is, so the river kind of splits and it'll be in front of me. It's a lake in front of me and then the river. So I'm assuming that's probably the lake. So it's like over it's like over here somewhere I think. That's it, 48 miles. It probably wouldn't hurt to start pulling back some speed here soon. We could probably push the, we could probably get the, yeah, I'm just trying to think what we should do. We're at 8,000 feet. Still got a little ways to go. You're gonna to have to deviate right a little bit and come in, as you can see on the, the GPS here. That's the way the runway runway sits. So let's see if there is. Let's bring up the map. Uh, YCC. Where's YCC? I don't even know what runway that is. KMSS is down here. YCC. I don't even know what airport that is. So we're going to, was it YUL? Yeah. Well, I don't know what I really did there, but okay. Uh -oh. Uh, why are we lagging so hard? What is going on? We hit home. We're only getting six frames right now, so that's not good. Did something open that wasn't supposed to open? Yeah, for some reason the map decided to make the game lag. That's kind of weird. Alright, so we're gonna bring the props back here them forward I guess. Which will probably bleed a little bit of our speed off. It's gonna get a little bit noisier in here as well. There to make sure your tray table is stowed, seatbelt is buckled. And we are gonna pull back a little bit of power here. We'll bring her back down to about a thousand. Oh yeah, a little bit less. We can shed some speed. I want to be in around 200 right now. Still pull back a 
back a little bit of power so we can shed some speed. Once we do have the airport in sight here, which I don't just yet, there are 6,000 feet, yeah, 500, it's going to take 12 minutes to get down. We're going to reduce some speed though, so. down to 2,000 feet. Still no airport in sight. Should be across the river here. According to my map. a little bit closer. So maybe when we're like 10 miles out, we'll do that adjustment so we can line up with the runway. But things are still looking good. Three degrees, it's warm here. The actual temperature here where I'm from is like, it's like minus... 15 degrees Celsius, and it was like minus 20 with the wind chill. When I left for work this morning, the airport's that ahead of us. There's another airport ahead of us? No, it doesn't say there is. Is that the airport? I hope not. There's no way that it is. What airport is that? Let me check the map. Well, that's kind of weird. CSS3 maybe? Yeah, I don't know, that's weird. Alright, so I think we, yeah, maybe 25 miles away we'll make our turn. I don't see the runway, or I don't see the airport yet. I'm pretty sure, yeah, maybe that's not it. Yep, nothing yet. So I'm not going to do my adjustment until I see the runway. Five thousand feet. So to compare to the map here, so I'm coming in, well, let's check this map, this might help us out a little bit better. Coming over here, okay, so there's a little bit of an island, which is really that there, and then it should be along this bank right here, I think. See if we can pick up the ATIS yet. Montreal Trudeau INTL Information Delta. 1800 Zulu weather. Wind so we're calm, landing around 6 left. More than 10. 2 9 or Sky 9 or clear. 2. Temperature 1 4. Dew point minus 1 0. Altimeter 2992. Arriving runways 0 6 left. 1 0. Departing runways 0 6 right. 1 0. Advise. Okay, so we have information at Delta. Okay, I think I see the runways there. What's this? What, what do we see here? It's just a radio tower. But I see something up here. Hot air balloons. Okay, so I'm going to switch to heading mode. Heading. 
are going to try to lose some speed here. site as well. Holy planes rocking me back and forth. They're running six left. This one looks like we're on a fairly good uh, we left hand left base here. Don't see the airport anymore. Sixty knots. Let's see if we can pull back a little bit more power. Okay. Thousand feet to go. Once we're in our white arc here, we can uh, think that in our first notch of flaps. So a little bit of time before I will make our left base turns. So we'll go uh, Montreal traffic. November 4-3 X-ray Sierra is approximately 13 miles from the airport. We'll be making a left base turn for runway 6 left. Let's see if I can see the airport here at all. Actually, we should make this turn now. There we go left. Notch of flaps here. What is this noise? Too fast for flaps? Yeah, I don't know what that noise is. It's getting annoying though.
this power. Do our first notch of flaps in. sticking that's not good all right so we're gonna pitch for speed I'm guessing it's doing this because it wants the landing gear down is my guess listen to the wind to see what the wind was at. Alright. Okay, a little bit more power. I do want a little bit more altitude. We're still a little crooked here. trim but the trim wheel is going to throw me way off. We're going to pull back some. We're going to pitch for some speed here. We want to be about 100 knots. Put our next notch of flaps. taxiway here.
wraps up. Beacon on. Repeat heat. Traffic departing. better of a uh, parking job but not too bad that shows the wheel turning oh it does that's pretty cool all right so here we are at Montreal and uh, I think we're gonna end this flight here hopefully everybody enjoyed the stream and um, we can plan our next flight maybe we'll do another flight uh, let's see if we can figure it out here Let's see, we're in Montreal. We fly to Quebec City. That's pretty, that's pretty good distance. Well, that's a pretty short flight. Yeah, I already fly to Nova Scotia, so we'll figure it out. But hopefully, everyone enjoyed the flight. Um, thanks for the follow, and um, uh, yeah, we will see you in the next stream.